Hey, I'm Kier, and this is that vlog thing that I'm doing. The other day I talked a little bit about some lessons that I learned from horror films growing up. I, I think about this stuff a lot. And one of the other things that I think about on a regular basis is the different types of monsters that show up in horror films and what they can say about the society we're in, about the time when the films are created. Uh, so over the next few days, I'm going to talk about a bunch of different monsters, zombies, vampires, werewolves, ghosts, aliens, uh, constructs like Frankenstein's monster, uh, and talk a little bit about what I think uh, they, they're emblematic of what they mean in, in the bigger sense. Now, the thing to understand about this is that, first of all, it's just opinion, mostly. Uh, and second of all, that while it may be true now, it won't necessarily be true later because society changes. And what we fear changes. And how these things represent what we fear changes over time. So what a zombie represents now may be very different from what a zombie represented uh, in the 60s, or in the 50s, or in the 40s, and what it may represent in 2020, in 2050. We'll, only time will tell how that will all go. But for now, I'm just going to talk about a few of these. I'm going to talk about zombies right off the top, because, well, I just finished watching Fear the Walking Dead uh, first season the other day. We've got a new season of The Walking Dead television show coming up. We've got a horde of zombie movies coming out. Zombies are a big deal. They've been a big deal for more than a few years now, and they still are. It's lasted longer than the last time zombies were popular. So that's, that's an interesting bit uh, right there. Now... I have to be clear that we're talking mostly about the Romero zombies, the ones that uh, are based on what you saw in Night of the Living Dead uh, back in the day. Uh, not talking about the magic zombies, uh, which were the first types of zombies that we dealt with uh, back in the, the 30s and 40s, the voodoo zombies, uh, among other types. Uh, the ones based in mythology and everything like that. Now, these are the, these are the walking dead, the, the ones that, for one reason or another, uh, they die, and they come back, and they come after you, looking to eat parts of your body. Now, the current crop of zombies, uh, they're not interested in your brains, they're interested in the rest of the meat on your body. Uh, they, they don't eat brains. That was a different type of zombie, which had its place in the, uh, in the, the history of fear. Uh, but today's zombies, it's not so much about what today's zombies themselves represent. It's more about what the entire zombie apocalypse represents. We're talking about the complete collapse of society. We're talking about an epidemic that goes and becomes a pandemic that then becomes an outright apocalypse. It leaves cities filled with rotting corpses that then get up and come after you. It leaves people who are good people doing things like killing each other over cans of beans, not trusting uh, their neighbors anymore to uh, let them in when they're banging on the door screaming for their lives. It, it's not so much dying and becoming a zombie that is the problem. It's what you devolve into in order to survive. Now that's interesting if you frame it in the uh, idea of today's economic realities, of our uh, socio-political realities, and of the growing feelings and expressions of marginalization uh, all across the board. Now, there's a lot of people out there that don't trust the government. 
Surprise, surprise. Well, in a zombie apocalypse, the government fails the people horribly. That's legitimate fear, and that's a legitimate representation of the fear, depending on whether or not the particular uh, bit of zombie fiction goes into what created the zombies, uh, uh, it may be caused by government experiments. It may be caused by something that science has created. Uh, so you have that, that fear of your genetically modified uh, plants and organisms and everything like that that can creep in there. And then the government, again, fails to protect the people. There's a lot of people that don't really feel that protected by the government right now. There's a very large bit of distrust, and that distrust is a big part of any zombie fiction, especially shows like The Walking Dead, where it's all about it's us or them. And it's going to be us, because we're going to take them out. No matter what it takes, we're going to protect our own. And it's that tribal attitude that, that really defines the survivors in these uh, zombie apocalypse scenarios. And that's who we identify with. They're the heroes of the story, but they're heroes that can do some really really despicable things in the name of protecting themselves and their families, be it blood or just connection. Some hard lessons get learned there. Uh, there are no pacifists who survive very long in the zombie apocalypse. They either get destroyed by the zombies, who are effectively part of the environment, or they get destroyed by other survivors who are more dangerous than the zombies in most cases. The zombies are slow. They only move in that direction. They come after noise. Humans, other survivors, plot and scheme against you. And where the horror in zombie fiction comes from very often is from the humans in the story, not just the ones who have survived who are now trying to make it so we don't survive, but what we can become when pushed past our comfort levels uh, in civilization. And that's a pretty scary thing, discovering the horrible things that we are all capable of. Uh, you think yourself a good person. But if it came down to you or someone else surviving, who knows what you're capable of? Well, situations have shown that you, in general, can be capable of some pretty horrific things. And that's what gets showcased in the uh, zombie apocalypse fiction. Sure, zombies themselves are scary. The walking, rotting corpses of friends and loved ones coming to eat your flesh? That's the stuff of nightmares. But it's not where the deeper horror lies. The deep, deeper horror lies within the survivors. And I think that's really interesting. And I think shows like The Walking Dead and uh, some other non-action movie zombie fiction uh, really get at that. So the next time you're watching a zombie movie or thinking about the zombie apocalypse, think about what it is that really scares you about it. Is it the, the zombies coming after you? Or is it what you're going to have to do in order to survive? That's it for today. Uh, if you want to uh, talk about uh, zombies or any other uh, things like this, make some suggestions for other monsters to talk about, uh, hit me up in the comments down there or shoot me a message. If you like what you saw here, uh, hit the like button. Uh, give me a thumbs up down there. Uh, also, subscribe uh, so you get notified of new videos that show up. Right now they're showing up every day, so it's easy to remember. But if you get an email notification, 
you'll be even more sure. And uh, share this video if you think someone else has an opinion about uh, what I'm talking about and if you think they'd be interested in any of this. That's it for today. I'm Kier, and I guess I'll see you tomorrow.